know God, love God, and serve God. We need to know who we are, love one another, and serve one another. Be wielding the sword of the Word of God like Jesus Christ did when He was in the wilderness and the devil came to take Him out. Y'all ready to get into the Word of God? Praise the Lord. Let's uh, welcome our television audience this morning. Hallelujah. We welcome you today. I encourage you to go get a Bible and follow along today. You're going to need to follow in your Bible today. Amen. I want you to see what the Bible says about this subject. Get, get a hold of your Bible. Lift it up to heaven. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. This morning I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I will never be the same again, in Jesus' name. Say, Heavenly Father, speak to my heart and change my life today. Amen, amen. Open up to the book of Luke in chapter 11. The book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 14. We'll be looking at. I love to hear the sound of Bible pages turning. Amen? I like that sound. But we need to be focused on the Word of God. Focused on our prayer lives. Come on, let, let, let's do a little checklist today. How is your prayer life? Check? I don't know. How is your, your study? How, how are you doing it reading the Word of God and study, studying the Word on a daily basis? Check? You know, how about fasting? Oh, X. You see, the scripture does teach us that some things do not come out or change without prayer and fasting. Even though Jesus Christ defeated the devil, there's still certain things that we must do as Christians to walk in that authority. And there's a story when Jesus and uh, Peter, James, and John came off of the Mount of Transfiguration. When they were coming down, they, they met them, uh, these people, this, this father whose son the disciples could not deliver. They brought this, this boy to the disciples and the disciples could not cast the devil out of him. Couldn't, couldn't heal him, couldn't bring deliverance to him. And when it was all said and done, when you get through the end of the story, the disciples go to Jesus after Jesus delivers this boy from this spirit, this unclean spirit. And Jesus said, it's, this kind does not come out without prayer and fasting. In other words, you were not quite ready. You were not prayed up enough. You were not focused enough on the things of the kingdom. And I, I want to talk about that today because a lot of times we get focused as the church and as the people of God on each other instead of on Jesus. We need to focus on Jesus because I'll tell you what, Jesus is ready. Pastor Mark might not be ready. You might not be ready, but Jesus is ready. And so don't put all of your deliverance and your hope in a person. Put your hope in Jesus Christ. Because you can come to me and go home the same way that you came to me. Do you all realize that? You can go see Benny Hinn and you'll go home the same way you were when you went to see Benny Hinn. But if you have an encounter with Jesus, you're not going to be the same whenever you leave your encounter with Jesus Christ. See, we, we got to put our focus on Jesus. But what has happened over the years, we hear all of these preachers and all of these people preaching about how powerful they are. How they, they preach about going in the hospitals and, and just praying for everybody and everybody walking out of the hospitals and, and, and all these kind of things. But those things are not really happening. Okay, now one amen. And so therefore, people look at this and they say, well, you know what? I'm not sure about that. Maybe God doesn't do that. Yes, God does do that, but you got to get your eyes on Jesus and not on man. And so what happens? We get offended. We get disillusioned. And we back off and we quit pressing into the kingdom. And we stop growing as Christians. 
And we forget about the principles of the word that simply say if you're sick, you can call for the elders of the church and they'll anoint you with oil and they'll pray the prayer of faith and God will heal the sick, he'll save the sick. It says where two agree is touching anything, God will do it. And we start backing off of these promises and not believing the word of God. And what happens is we're giving ground back to the devil instead of taking ground. Now look at verse 14, what it says right here. And he, Jesus, was casting out a demon, and it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke, and the multitudes marveled. You know, when, you still, when we talk about demons today, people still marvel at that. Now, now basics, basic things about life and Christianity. There are two realms. There's a natural realm and a spiritual realm. How many of y'all believe that? Do y'all believe that? There are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, and there's the kingdom of darkness. And those, that kingdom of darkness transcends both the natural realm and the spiritual realm. And so therefore we must be aware that there's more going on than what we just see. The scripture says plainly that we don't just wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness evil hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So there, there are spiritual forces that are unseen that, that create culture and atmosphere and, and behavior. And there are demons and devils that are out to destroy your life. Now, to say that you're a Christian and you follow Jesus, but you don't ever look at the scripture to see what Jesus did and what he taught... Or we just say, well, that's not for the day. I don't believe in the devil. I don't believe in those kind of things. Everything has now become medical. It's all become scientific. It's all become educational. It's all become psychological. But Jesus didn't teach all that. Amen? Amen? Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's what the scripture says. But we want to be Christians, but we don't want to talk about having to overcome the devil or casting out the devil or resisting the devil, or understanding that there is an enemy. Now, now, as I talk to you today, we need to realize that when we talk about this subject, we need to be careful. Because Satan likes to try to make us uh, afraid. He, 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 he tries to make us, well, we don't want to go there. That's kind of weird. That's kind of strange. And because of our attitude about that and our fear, he keeps us in bondage. Are y'all with me today? I got y'all attention today? So what I'm going to look at today, we're going to look at the Word of God. When we read the Gospels, when we read the book of Acts, when we read the epistles, we find out out that there are devils, demons, fallen angels that are assigned to destroy the kingdom of God and destroy our lives. We find these things in the Scripture. So we marvel when someone starts talking about this. There's some churches, they don't even want to believe that the devil needs to be cast out anymore. Let's look at some scriptures. I'm going to read some, some kind of quick to you. you. You can turn there if you want. But in, in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, 16, and 17, this is what it says in giving the great commission to the church. Jesus said, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devil." The first thing he says, he says, go preach the gospel. And this is going to be the signs of those who believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. Now, that's not in just one place in the scripture. In Mark in chapter 3, verse 14, it says this. When he sent them out to preach, every time he sent them out to preach, he gave them power. Listen. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Say power. Power. He gave them power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Now you see, the, the scripture calls the devil the prince of the power of the air. In other words, he tries to get into the atmosphere to, to, to mess up what God's doing. So even today, as I'm preaching and beginning to expose him, He's going to try to mess up what comes out of my mouth by the time it goes into your ear so that you don't hear the truth, so that you don't receive the truth. Because if you receive the truth, the truth will make you free. So he's at work right now 
trying to stop us from obeying God and hearing the Word of God. Do y'all realize that? So you need to stay focused on God. He's trying to hinder me right now, even as I'm trying to preach. Amen? Trying to get my mind on different things. See, there's a real enemy that wants to distract us and keep us from walking in the kingdom of God. And he uses people. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We're supposed to love all sinners, all people. But I don't have to love their sin. And I don't have to love their devil either. That they may have in their lives. Woo! And do y'all realize that some of y'all are, are trying to submit to a devil and make a devil happy? And not growing in the things of God. Hmm. Look at Luke in chapter 9 and verses 1, two, 1 and 2. And it says, And then he called his twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons. Say all demons. All demons. So it doesn't matter if he thinks he's a big demon or a little demon. We have, a pow we have power over all demons. We have authority over all demons. But see, when we say demons, some of y'all fall back to Hollywood's version of demons. The exorcist or, or some Hollywood version. How many know that Hollywood is under the influence of demons? So I wouldn't try to determine what's true and not true by looking at what they tell you. Amen? You know, whenever you're confused and, and, and oppression and depression comes and... and and every time you turn around, it's like you're offended at something, you're offended at something, you're offended at something. Everything kind of gets you upset. You need to realize that you need to resist the devil. Because I'll tell you what is the number one thing that keeps the church, you and me, from growing. And you can write this down. The number one thing is offense. We get offended. And when you get offended, when something upsets you, when something happens that you don't like, you will do things that will actually put you in a place of danger. You can come to church, and let me tell you, if you come to church a long time, I'm going to do something, say something that's going to offend you. I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm not the Savior. And you'll look at me, and, and I'll offend you, and say, well, I'm not going back there. And then you quit going to church. Next thing you know, you're going to be having a highball, you'll be getting drunk again, you'll be, uh, you know, doing the things that you used to do again, and what happens, you open the door to the devil, and your life isn't moving towards God, your life is moving away from God. Amen. You're sitting in church, and maybe one of the people on the worship team does something that offends you. You see them out in the community, and they do something that offends you. Well, then all of a sudden, it's like, I don't care if that church makes it or not anymore. That's a devil that you're listening to. Amen. And we get offended. Forgetting that it's not about us, it's about Him. So not, it's not about what we get, it's about what we give. Amen. It's not about what we reap, it's about what we sow. Because what you sow is what you're going to reap. Amen. Amen? You come in here and you sow love and you sow fellowship, guess what you're going to reap? Love and fellowship. Amen. But we get offended so easily. You know why? Because we want what we want. It's selfishness, it's envy, it's covetousness it's sin and it opens the door sin is what opens the door for the devil to come in even though at one time you've been delivered here you are something offends you and you'll use it for an excuse you know how I know because I'm just like you y'all know I get offended at the church too sometimes can I talk plainly with y'all I mean, you, you preach, you teach, you pray, you fast, you do all that you can. You give your life, you give up everything. You try to mentor somebody. You try to activate somebody. You try to help them grow in the things of God. Then all of a sudden they come to you one day and say, Well, Pastor, I, I just believe this isn't where God wants me to be. I'm going to be going somewhere else after you've done spent three years sowing into their lives. And then they go somewhere else. And you step back and you know what happens to me? Sometimes it offends me. And I say, Well, what's the point? How many times, God, am I going to have to do this with another person who comes in? They never want to go through the whole process of submitting and learning. They, they either want to just jump up and preach and think that they're ready to go. They don't want to submit all the way through. And therefore, in the process of it, they just... And it can be two years, three years. You can pour your whole life into them. And then the next thing you know, 
They're going somewhere else. All the training you put, instead of reaping from it in this ministry, they go somewhere else. Not submit it to anybody. Just submit it to their own self, their own vision. And so what happens is, as a, as a human, I'll say, what's the point? And what will happen, you get to this apathy where you say, I don't care anymore. Anybody ever been there? How about in your marriage? I love her. I, I work all these hours. I've done it. I've given her a car, a house. I've done this and all of this. I've, I've given all I can. And, and that woman still ain't happy. What's the point? You got offended. And then you say, it don't matter anymore. Then the devil comes in. Next thing you know, your family gets destroyed, busted up by divorce. So offense is the number one tool the enemy uses to keep us from growing in God. Amen. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 119, 165, Great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So when you love the word of God, nothing offends you. You say, whoo, that's hard. I know, because I'm the same way. Whenever I begin to get offended, I have to back up and say, you know what? No, God, it's not really about them. It's not about me. It's about you and your calling and your passion and what you did on the cross. And therefore, I'm going to do what you've called me to do for you. You are my Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter if they accept it or don't. It's about you and me and you. And let me tell you one thing I know. I love God because God delivered me from my sin. God delivered me from this world. So I'm just like you. Now, you know who didn't get offended? Jesus. Amen. He's the perfect one. Amen. And so what happens, offense comes, and we don't realize, but we open the door, and we fall right back into the same things we used to be in before. How many of y'all have siblings, brothers and sisters? Have they ever offended you? No, uh-uh. They've never done anything to step on your toes, huh? Then you step back and say, what's the point? I don't care if I ever fellowship with them again or talk to them again. The devil has just infiltrated that family to try to separate it and destroy it. Has your mother-in-law ever offended you? <laughs> no, never, huh? Praise God, don't go there. Relationship. But see, when we come together, we need to realize that God called us together for a purpose. So he always gave them power over demonic forces, over demons and devils. In, in Luke 9 there, where it says he gave him power, authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And it says, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Jesus never sent his disciples out to preach without giving them authority over the devil Amen. and devils. But we act like there's no such thing as devils in America. Isn't that amazing? In Mark chapter 6, verse 13, it says this, And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. 1 John 3, 8, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. And listen to the latter part of this verse. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ became a man and walked on this planet to crush the head of the serpent. To destroy the works of the devil. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You know, sometimes we're oppressed by the devil. Amen. Amen? And we need to take authority as children of God. I want to just give you scripturally six things Six ways that demons interact with human beings. Listen to this. We'll just go through this quickly. Number one, they motivate false philosophies of life, false teachings and false philosophies. 
This whole thing that, you know the teaching that there's no such thing as the devil? Guess who originated that? The devil. Or how, how about uh, evolution, that we're, we're really not the product of, of, of God's love and creation, that we're just products of, a, of an explosion. That's a false teaching. You were created by God with a purpose and a plan. Amen? In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says in latter times that some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons, de deceiving spirits, will depart from believing the truth about God's Word and will, be, will go astray. See, the most important thing you need to be free is to receive from God a love for the truth. Amen. Say a love for the truth. Amen. Now what does that mean? We need to believe the truth and love the truth. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen? So when you hear the truth, you have to decide. Am I going to remain in my deception and believe what I want to believe about God? Because some people say, well, you just got to come up with your own belief system. You just got to, you know, between you and God, you work that out. I don't believe in, in, in following the Bible or any kind of religion or Christianity or anything. You just got to, you know, come up with your own belief about God. Well, you're going to be deceived. Amen. Because there's a truth. You know, the truth says that you're not supposed to have sex until you get married. The truth says you're not supposed to have sex until you marry her or him. The truth says you're not supposed to have sex until you marry her or him. The truth says that. But we got this other teaching that we believe that says, no, if you're in love, it doesn't matter. So we become deceived. Woo, hallelujah. The truth is you're never supposed to lie. The truth is you're never supposed to tell a lie. Well, a white lie, it's okay. No, the truth is you're never supposed to lie. You're never supposed to bear false witness against somebody else. You're never supposed to steal what belongs to anybody else. That's the truth. Well, if they left it there, they must not needed it. They didn't lock it up, so I guess they knew that somebody was going to steal it, so I was just going to, you know, before somebody else got it, I was going to get it. Deceived. Amen. 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 Glory to God. What does the truth? We know this truth, but we don't want because we're trying to, to we, we think we can skate on the thin ice and it's never going to fall for us. Hmm. But you don't know when your Lord is going to call you to an account. You do not know the day and the hour and the time when God is going to call you. And you'll stand before him. Am I doing all right this morning? I'm not here to tickle your ear. Demons will produce moral impurity in your life. They're always trying to lead you towards impure things. Jesus called spirits that were in people unclean spirits. Unclean. Leading us, always tempting us in the areas of the lust of our eyes, the lust of our flesh, the pride of our lives. Number three, they oppose spiritual growth in your life. In the book of Ephesians, it says that there's a plan, the schemes of the devil to destroy you, to stop you from growing. So therefore, put on the whole armor of God. You've got to realize that you're in a battle and we're supposed to be taking land. And you know how that's going to be done? It's going to be done by your lifestyle. It's going to be done by your, your prayer. It's going to be done by your, your study of the Word. It's going to be done by loving God and loving others and serving others and doing what the Scripture says plainly that we ought to be doing as Christians. Amen? But a lot of people, this is what some people believe. And, and, and if you believe this, praise God. They think that we're just going to come together at church. Sometimes a few of us are going to get together and we're going to pray. And, and whenever, whenever they started to build a casino, we'd get together and we'd pray over the, uh, uh, like a, a, a picture of the casino and say that it's going to become a church one day. We're going to fill that thing up for God. But you know what? We couldn't even fill up the church. 
We couldn't even get people to come and fill up the church house. But we're going to believe that we're going to take over that building over there? Come on, let's be for real. Or that if we pray hard enough, people are going to just get up from the blackjack table and come straight over here, falling down and, and coming into the church right here and giving their lives to the Lord because we were just so holy and prayed a lot at church. No, if you don't go out there and bring the gospel to them, they will never hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're using that for an excuse not to go out there and live it. Now, I believe in the power of prayer. You need to have prayer for you to go. But there's no pattern in the scripture where they ever went to church and prayed and everybody just flooded the church. That's not the pattern. We get some kind of delusional fantasy about that. Amen? Praise God. So let's believe the truth. The truth is, you are supposed to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to have the truth in your life. You're supposed to know the Word of God. You're supposed to be prayed up. You're supposed to be anointed so that you can go to the world and share this glorious gospel that has set you free so that they can be set free. Amen. That's what you're supposed to do. Amen. Well, my time is up on television. We're glad that you joined us today. And uh, we hope to see you again next week. God bless you. I want to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast today. I want to give you one more opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. The Word of God says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, that you shall be saved. Pray this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all of my sins. I turn my life over to you. I ask you to come into my heart and into my life. I make you the Lord of my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I believe that you're born again. You need to get in a church that teaches the Word of God. There's many great local churches throughout central Louisiana. If you can't find one, we'd like to invite you to come here to Mansura, Louisiana. We're on Highway 107 between Cottonport and Mansura. When you get here, you'll find people who will love you and that you'll be able to love. I also want to ask you to tune in next week at this same time, same station. And remember, God knows everything about you and loves you anyway.